God bless you. Facebook, I am excited about what the Lord is doing. I'm excited about the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and they add no sorrow. God is getting ready to do something amazing for you. I want to welcome you to Reformers, the place where lives are changed. I'm going to read to you a scripture. Psalms 24 declares the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God is getting ready to do something amazing amazing for you. There is definitely change in the earth for it declares for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Him with a clean hand and a pure heart. The one who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. What is the Lord saying to you today? He's saying that this is the day of new beginnings. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. I'm excited today because I know uh, there are many of you in your homes who are saying, God, I'm ready for something new. You're saying, Lord, I'm ready to be refreshed. You're saying, Lord, I'm ready for a new beginning. I'm telling you today that you're going to experience one of the most powerful moves of God that you have ever seen. The scripture points out, he said, those with clean hands and a pure heart. Do you know that your hands are different from your heart? Oh my God, the hand is the hand work of God and the heart is deceitful. We have to keep our heart positioned before the Father. Listen, I'm excited today about the manifestation of God, the miracles of the Lord. David said, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a high place in God and not many will gather there. The scripture says that the way of holiness, that very few will be on the road, that it is narrow. Oh my God. It is now you, many of you today, are sitting in your homes, you're sitting wherever you are, and you're thinking about the goodness of God, and you're thinking about the ascension of God. Lord. The ascension of the Lord will require purity. Listen, I am praying today for those there was an earthquake in North Carolina. We want to pray for those, our loved ones and friends and family, and we want to begin to declare the healing of the Lord over our nation. For we know the times that we are living in that there will be earthquakes, there will be rumors, there will be tragedies, there will be all type of demonic entities and the Bible declares that these things must come to pass for the fulfilling of his return. Let me tell you something. If you're not positioned in God, you need to get positioned in the Lord. This is not the time to be wandering and walking around, not knowing which way you would go. I'm decreeing over your family's healing. I'm decreeing over you healing. I'm declaring the protection of the Lord and the strength of God. So, Father, today we declare the scripture, Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Uh, who may ascend to the Lord, to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. And this thing catches me by a miracle. It says, and they will receive the blessing from the Lord, my God. And vindication from God. There is a vindication to you in this season and that's about to happen. Because you did not compromise, because you did not throw in the towel, because you kept on praying, you may have been praying but yet feeling depressed, but because you kept the praise, because you kept intercession on your lips, because you kept revival on your spirit, the Lord himself is going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you've asked or think. I'm telling you, God is doing something amazing. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. Get out your cell phone. Get your cell phone. And I want you to share. I'm going right now on my Facebook. I want you to share right now what God is getting ready.
ready to do. I want you to share this to someone, share it to your family, share it to your friends. Listen, I have it right here. I'm looking right now. I want you to go and I want you to share it. It's not enough people on here. We need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For those of you that are part of Reformers, can you share right now on your page? Come on, somebody is excited to hear about Jesus. I'm telling you, God is doing something powerful and amazing in the earth, and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Come on, go and share it. Share it with the family member. Share it with a friend. Come on, somebody share it somewhere right now, wherever you are. Share what the Lord is doing. For certainly eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for you. I'm telling you, at this time, we're getting ready to see the Reformers video. We want to look at what Reformers is, and we want to be able to see what God is saying in this hour. I am so excited to have you guys. I'm watching right now as you're tagging people. Come on, tag people. Bring them in. Come on, tell somebody about Jesus. Oh, this is so exciting about what the Lord is doing. We will not panic, but we will pray. I love the Lord. But certainly he has heard our cry. I'm excited about Jesus. Uh, listen, at this moment, we're getting ready to see our video. Get ready to be posted on as you're getting more people to come on to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, I want to welcome, I want to welcome Aaliyah May. I want to welcome Sharon. I want to welcome Mary Wilson. I want to welcome Cherise. I want to welcome Tashmika. Come on, I want to welcome Pika, Donna Gillard. Hallelujah. I want to welcome, welcome you into the house of the Lord. I want to welcome Evanda London. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, Stephen Crawford. God bless you. Somebody welcome them. We're welcoming these souls unto the Lord. For truly the Lord is good and his mercy endured forever. I am excited. Oh, Rabandia. God bless you, Tanisha, Tanisha Andrews. God bless you. It's a blessing to have you. I'm excited about it. God bless you, Pastor Carter. Amen. God bless you, Alfred Carter. We are excited to have you today in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Oh, gosh, this is amazing. Hallelujah, for the Lord is good. Listen, we're moving right along today. We don't want to hold your time long, but we want to bring you an impartation that you have never seen. I want to remember that this is the year of vindication, restoration, and ascension. This is the year of great patience for the perfecting of what the Lord is going to do in your life. I'm telling you, a change is going to happen. A change is going to be manifested. We welcome you into the family today. We thank you for visiting us today. I'm excited about what Jesus is doing. Hallelujah. Listen, at this time, oh, Rabbi, we're going to have Tiffany Lovell. She is going to declare a prophetic word to you today. Come on, decree that prophetic word. Come on. Decree. Good morning, good morning, good morning, reformers. How are you? Yes. So while in prayer, I heard the spirit of the Lord say restitution. Mm -hmm. Then he said, go define it. Go look it up. And restitution is a loaded word. Uh, one part of restitution means to surrender and yielding. So in this hour, the Father is requiring us to yield and to surrender unto him like never before in order to get the recompensation. Amen? So I decree and declare, I prophesy over you that restitution is hitting your houses now. I prophesy that this is the time of new beginnings. I prophesy unto you and your household that 
God is doing a new thing in you, that you will dream again, that he is healing again, that he is helping you through the process as you remain faithfully obedient unto him. We stand on his word of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. We stand on his word, Lute Leviticus 26, 3 through 9. I encourage you to read those scriptures It was it's, and get, have them to anchor in your soul. God is restituting. Open your eyes, man and woman of God, to see what God is doing in this hour. Don't look towards the pandemic or the pain of your past. We are moving forward in God like never before. Get yourself postured in him now as as we plow, as we build. This is a time to build your business. This is a time to build up your ministry. This is a time to build up your relationship in your home with your children, with your husband, with your wives, like never before. This, this is the time of restoration and vindication as our mother has said, as Apostle Serafina Thomas has said, this is the time like never before. Restitution unto you now in the name of Jesus, so shall it be, amen. You know, and I want to add this, daughter, as you were on here, you begin to declare, you said the word was what? It was what again? It was Deuteronomy 28, 1 through, 1 through 14. And you, Leviticus. Right. Mm -hmm. You also said that the word was loaded. What word was that that you said is loaded? Restitution. Restitution. It's so prophetic what you said about it being loaded. When something is loaded, that means it's full of it's full of bullets. That's like a gun. When a gun is loaded, it's ready to shoot fire. And that is so strategic what you said. You said that it is loaded, which means that God is ready to restore. He's loaded with blessings. He's loaded with miracles. He's loaded with signs and wonders. And, and you begin to compel the people. You, I want you to begin to bring Break that down about not looking to the pandemic, not looking to the distress of the world. My God, oh my God, this is so powerful. I want you to break that down. I feel like you just skimmed through it so fast, but begin to break that down when you said God began to tell you that it was fully loaded. What does yes. that mean? Go ahead. Yes, mom. Uh, it's fully loaded in the sense that you know, we want to focus on the things around us, but our eyes need to be focused on God. The word says that we must remain steadfast on him, him to give us perfect peace. So we not we don't need to be looking to the pandemic. We have to understand even in the pandemic, even in a weary land, our our father in heaven is blessing us. We are literally standing under an open heaven in this season like never before. This is not the time to pout. This is not the time to wonder or to question our father. This is a this is the time to stand firm upon his promises and know that the manifestation will take place as we endure the process, as the series we are on is endurance. Amen. So we need to endure the process and go through it and stop complaining and plow and build and push forward. We have to push forward in order for that baby to come out. You understand? Amen. Come on. So we got to push now. We got to press. There's no room for complaining. There's no room for excuses. Everything that we need is in him. He's blessed us he's raining down on us he's raining us in twofold the rain the our father is raining on us i am not talking about only r-a-i-n i'm talking about r-e-i-g-n amen <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh. So powerful what you said, daughter. You said he's not only R A I N, but he's R E I E. Oh my God, he's doing both. Meaning he's that doing both is a duality. Yes. Duality. yes. So we want to prophesy duality in this atmosphere. Come on, decree it. Come on, prophesy duality. Come on, yes. prophesy. Duality. Yes, so we promise the Come duality on. of the Lord, the duality of the of the blessing of God, the overflow. We are in the place of Goshen, people of God. Open your eyes. We are in, oh God. We are in the place of Goshen like never before. This is the hour of blessing. This is the time of overflow. There is no lack in him. There's no limitation in God. Take the limitation off of him. Take the lid off of God. Receive the blessing. Receive the overflow. Step into the place that he has called you to we have to be faithfully obedient in order to be faithfully obedient you have to be consistent mm. jesus you have to be consistent that in order for you to endure the process there has to be a consistency you can't say i'm doing it today and then tomorrow you don't want to do it because you're hurting because you're in your emotions get out of your emotions get out of that old mindset get out of that old wine skin it's time to step into the new let the father redress you in this hour for the duality of his power his glory to take place in you and your family like never before hallelujah 
This is so powerful. This is so powerful. The rain, the two, oh my gosh. She said we will R-E-I-G-N and we will R-A-I-N. We're going to express a duality. My God, that's so powerful. Oh God, God's going to expand us. And then there's some people right now that's saying, yeah, I keep hearing that this is the year of blessing. This is the year of miracles, but yet I don't see anything. Yet I don't see a harvest. Yet I don't see the manifestation of God. And daughter, I remember in a season of your life when you felt as though God it's nothing coming down you're saying rain but there's no rain when Elijah sent the servant he kept coming back saying I don't see no rain I don't see what you're talking about but see the prophet saw it this is why you need a prophet in your life that will see it when you can't see it that will believe when you can't believe that will hold on when you can't hold on he said I don't see no rain he said go back again come on there are many of you are that are in a season where God is speaking, but yet you don't see what he's saying. God is telling you you're coming out, but yet you're still in that house. God is telling you that you'll see miracles, but yet you're not seeing the manifestation. Come on, Tiffany, begin to speak. Come on, begin to decree. Begin to declare that we will see what the Lord has said. We will see the manifestation of God. Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. We shall see what the Lord has said as we remain faithful and obedient unto him. We have to, there's a place, there's a supernatural surrender. The word says, we always read Psalm 37 wrong. We often say to ourselves, oh, he will give me the desires of my heart. No. He, he, when he said that, he meant he's going to give you his desires. So when you speak a thing, it has to come to pass because it's his word. Did y'all catch that? Yes. And you got to catch that. We want we want what we want, but that's not what his word says. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. And then he will grant it unto us. So we have to be, we have to change how we've been praying regarding that scripture. We have to shift in that area. We are, we pray for God, give me the desires of your heart. So when I speak a thing, I know it has to come to pass because it's your word and you are not a man that you shall lie. Everything that you have said concerning me and my household, everything that you have ordained from the time I was being formed in my mother's womb, it shall come to pass like never before. This is the hour where we have to decree and declare everything. We have to stand upon his word and his promises as our apostle has taught us through all the series, through all her teaching and impartation by the move of the Holy spirit we have to really stand on his word in this hour you cannot go by what you're seeing for the word says we walk by faith and not by sight so why are you consumed with what's going on in the world when you when you claim that you are a child of god come on we are not we, we are citizens of the kingdom Woo! we are just passing through here we are citizens of the kingdom. You can't get caught up in the world. We are supposed to be, be rid of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So if we are true citizens of the kingdom, why are you caught up in the pandemic? Why are you caught up in the pain of your past? Why are you caught up in the things that God has told you to get rid of? Because he's trying to do a new thing to you. He's trying to birth you into the place of purpose and destiny. For God is our purpose pusher. Come on, somebody. This is so powerful what you have declared. And we thank you for the for the declaration of the Lord today that you have released. I mean, that duality of what the Lord is going to do in the spirit. Amen. As I'm sitting here on my phone, there are so many people that are being blessed right now by the word of God. Amen. Of what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. We're excited. Even as you spoke that thing that God is doing a duality. My God, he, he's not only reigning in one area, he's reigning in in the other area you shall reign in the realm of the spirit i'm telling you this is so powerful and we thank you for using your gift so for us to receive the word of the lord listen at this time we're going to hear from another prophet of the house amen and he's going to declare the word of the lord come on matthew ethoi come on declare what the lord is saying in this hour as she has come so eloquently and released that powerful word my god We are ready. Amen. I, I want to declare to you all because uh, the Lord showed me, um, he showed me a compass. And he showed us, so if, if you know, a compass is an instrument of direction, is what a compass is used for. Uh, and so he, he declared to me three things. Uh, a compass is affected by position, polarity, and the wind. And so for your position, where you are at, 
um, the, you're in a perfect position for the Lord to direct you. No matter where you're at, God is visiting you in this hour and in your position, in your current state, God is visiting you. Polarity, this a lot of times has to do with, uh, with, with the, 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 the magnetism and the things that affect um, the needle in a compass. And so what happens is, is that uh, the needle or, or the polarity, uh, it, 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 it pertains to magnetism. And so I want to declare to you that your position, your position of brokenness, your position of not knowing where you're going, your position uh, where you're currently at, God is directing you, God is pushing you, God is uh, propelling you, and your, your, your position is a perfect uh, you're in a perfect place for God uh, to, to pour out his grace upon you. You're in a perfect place for God to, to push you. You're in a perfect place because the process is breaking you. The process is remolding you. The process is redefining you. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, it says Jesus was led into the wilderness. And after he came out, it says he was led in the wilderness by the spirit of the Lord. And after he came out, he stepped right into destiny. I'm going to declare to you that you are stepping right into destiny, uh, that the process has not come to sap you. It has not come to, uh, it has not come to cripple you, but it has come to make you. It has come to prep you. It has come to prime you. And so as you yield to the process, God is pushing you and your, pro your, your, your very process is actually attracting the glory of God because your in an impossible situation and so the impossible is the perfect position God wants you in why because God says I am the God of the impossible I am the God who can do miracles signs and wonders I am the God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think and the third thing uh, he showed me in the vision was the wind uh, John chapter 3 verse 8 said talks about the wind uh, so those who are born of this those who uh, the wind blows and no one knows where it comes from, uh, but yet you hear the sound of it. Uh, so it declares as well, those who are born of the spirit, uh, it, let us be led of the spirit as well. And so the Lord is leading us in a different, in, in directions. The Lord is leading us uh, and we must yield to the process. We must yield to his direction. We must yield to where God is taking us. Uh, and the question is, what are you being led by? And if you're being led by your emotions, if you're being led by uh, your hurt, if you're being led by your pain, if you're being led by your trauma, it will mislead you and you will find yourself in a place of, of you'll find yourself uh, in, in, in a perplexing place. Why? Because you have not yielded to God. You have not yielded to his hand. You have not yielded to his word. God wants a greater yielding in this hour. He spoke John 15 and 7 to me as well. In that, in that scripture, we get the word abide. Abide also means to remain. Remain through what? Remain through the testings, the trials, the tribulations. Even though the wind may blow, do not be moved. Even though there may be storms, even though there may be hurricanes, even though there may be earthquakes, do not be moved by what you see. Do not be moved by what you feel. For I am God and I am God alone. I am above what you feel. I am above what you see. I am above your situation. I can, and again, he can do exceedingly abundant above all that he, you can ask or think and so God is leading you let him lead you do not stagger do not waver let him lead you and yield and the question I have for you today is what are you being led by what are you being led by do not be distracted in this hour but keep your eyes fixed and focus on the Lord and I decree and declare it to you all that it shall be so in Jesus name this is so powerful what you're saying. You said that you, you, uh, Matthew, you said that, um, you know, that uh, you saw a compass and uh, many times we are led by our traumas. We're led by our hurt. We're led by our pain. And even as you're sitting side by side with me on live and people are watching us, um, 
and they're listening to what you're saying. So many people have been falling into destruction because they were led by their emotions. They were led by their pain. They were led by their discomfort. And, and even as the word of God is going forth, do you see the intricateness and the order of the word? You know, God comes first and talks about the reigning and the and the ruling. And then he deals with the intricate part of the hearts of his people that in order for you to reign, you got to reign with your heart positioned properly. Every scripture that we're saying is just all going into one. My God is powerful. Um, as God was beginning to show you that thing about the compass um, and you begin to talk about being led by trauma, uh, I want you to begin to speak to young people and your story personally of your father, the things that you've gone through and the things that you have uh, at one point in your life, you may have been led by, but as the Holy Spirit came in, you know, you begin to become led by the spirit. And then I believe you mentioned sometime this week that if we eat of not of faith, that it is actually a sin. Come on. So I want you to stretch the womb of the people and a greater dimension and way go ahead even as even as you were speaking apostle i began to feel the anointing uh Lord, my hand began to light up and i just wanted to agree and declare that there's deliverance be happening even now across this line, across these airways. I want to decree and declare to you that you're being delivered uh, from, the, from these things. You're being delivered uh, from these traumas, uh, from the hurt, the pain, and the sorrow. You're being delivered uh, from, these, from these things. And the Lord is even causing inner healing in the hearts of his people. Um, the process is not only to break you, not only to test you, to try you, but sometimes the process is, is to show you what's in you. So that the Lord may cause healing. The Lord is healing uh, as you be, as you continue to go forth for it says the righteous fall seven times but they get back up uh you are get i decree and declare to you all that you are getting back up uh that you are continuing to move forward in the things of god despite what it may look like despite what it may feel like even uh I even see in the realms of the spirit, uh, like there has been, uh, people have been stabbed in their side. People have been uh, pierced. Uh, it says in scripture that even as they pierce Jesus, they shall look upon those whom they have pierced. Why? Because it was a testament. Because God began to raise him up. Uh, he, there was a resurrection uh, as he died, as he yielded. And so there is deliver. I decree and declare, and I prophesy that there is deliverance and inner healing happening even now. Uh, just as uh, uh, Apostle was saying, um, when I was younger, you know, there were certain things that I dealt with with my father. You know, my father wasn't there for me. And so uh, since my father wasn't there for me, it left a hole where I had to be the man of the household. I had to be a man. I had to there was a lot of things I skipped over in my childhood that I had to grow up quick in. And so the Lord had to restore that child in me. He had to restore uh, that he had to restore that childlike joy in me, uh, that intimacy. And I found I had to find a father in God. And so as I found a father in him, he began to change my sense of direction. He began to change uh, and shape me and mold me into who I am today. And so as you continue, I wanted to create and declare to you as you continue to go forward that the process is shaping and molding you who, into who he wants you to be, uh, that you are stepping into destiny, that you're stepping into your calling, that you're stepping into your purpose. And even as you get over this obstacle, as you get over these trials, whether it be financial trials, whether it be physical trials, whether it be trials of, uh, of infirmity, whether it be any form of trial, whatever it is, God is greater than that trial. He is getting you over. He is pulling you over. He is, he is lifting you over. I decree and declare it right now that the Lord is doing it for you in this hour. Uh, and even as Apostle was talking about Romans 14. It says in Romans 14, whatever is not of faith is sin. God is killing the things in you that are not of faith. But we have relied upon our comforts for so long in society, and God is stripping us of those. He says, I want to be your comfort. He says, I want to be the thing that you lean upon. I want to be the thing that you rest upon. I want to be your compass, your sense of direction. I want to be uh, that thing that you are led by, not your emotions, uh, not the things that you feel, not the things that you necessarily see, but by his word man should not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god god is nourishing you he is feeding you and he shall visit you in this hour says the spirit of the lord 
Amen. Even as you were declaring that, you know, um, son, we want to prophesy to a few people. Amen. And we also want to keep Katrina Willis' son in prayer. Uh, there was an earthquake in North Carolina. We're getting some prayer requests coming in. They have not heard from him yet. And we want to plead the blood of Jesus against any bad news. We want to decree over North Carolina that not only will we hear from her son, but there will be also victory reports that will be begin to come in. Amen. There are those on here hallelujah, that we want to just begin to call their name out in prayer, and we want to prophesy the wellness of God over them. Come on, we want to begin to call out Ivanda London. Come on, son, we're going to move in the spirit really quickly. I decree over you, Ivanda London, that the Lord is healing your heart. I want to decree over you that your mind and your body and your soul is changing, and that where you're walking is no longer the same. I also feel a lot of pain, pain in the heart, pain in the heart, in the area of the heart. God is healing you, Ivanda. He is healing you. He's healing you. He's healing you in Jesus' name. He is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. We declare the healing of the Lord right now, that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Amen. We want to begin to minister over Hallelujah. We want to minister over different ones. It's so many people that I see on here. Uh, go ahead, uh, prophet. You can minister over Ivanda as well. You can declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Just as Apostle was speaking, I heard the word stabilize. I decree and declare that the Lord is stabilizing you. He's anchoring you, uh, that you are being anchored in your soul, uh, that for so long uh, things have tried to, to, to push you one way and push you the other. But God says in this season, you are being planted. He is planting you. Uh, you are being rooted and grounded. You're learning how to be rooted and grounded in him. I see in the realms of the spirit. Uh, and even now, uh, the Lord is doing a change within you. The Lord is, is turning things, or even turning things around for your good out here in the realms of the spirit. Uh, it said even those things that, that want good for you in the past, God is using it and turning it around for your good. It says all things work for the good of those that love the Lord, and the Lord is working it out for you. Um, the Lord is turning it around for you. Uh, the Lord is changing uh, your circumstances, your story. He is changing uh, even you. I hear the Lord is even changing you uh, from the inside out. There's a change happening uh, from, from within you uh, that he is fine tuning your desires. He's fine, fine tuning uh, your morals. He is fine tuning uh, even your thought process. I hear in the realms of the spirit uh, that you're not even going to think the same, um, that the Holy Spirit is coming in and he's doing a work within you. And I want to share this with you um, that the Lord is uh, even even touching you uh, in areas in your heart, areas in your mind, things that have um, that that have been uh, violated uh, here in the realms of the spirit. Uh, but the Lord is 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 coming in and He's doing a work within you, uh, says the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, uh, and even as you were ministering with the healing, I could, I'm a prophet that oftentimes I can feel people's pain and I can feel the enormous amount of people and women, women especially that are on here that are experiencing a lot of emotional pain and torment, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. Um, and I'm just reading, looking over my word. And even as you were talking, I want to decree over them that the Lord is y'all shepherd. He is our shepherd. You need to know what a shepherd is, a shepherd comforts, a shepherd cuts, a shepherd protects. And it says, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. I always wonder to myself, Matthew, I said, why would he say to lie down in green pastures? That meant a place of rest. The Lord wants to bring us in a place of rest in him. You can rest when you know that he is your shepherd. We have to begin to move like we know he's our father. We have to begin to move. But see, the reason why a lot of us cannot move that way is because all our life, our natural fathers were not there. So the thought of having a father is just hard for us to comprehend. And this is why the Holy Spirit having a relationship with the 
Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you the heart of Jesus. The Holy Spirit contains the heart of Jesus. And as you spend more time with the Holy Spirit, he will begin to show you who Jesus is. My God, many of us were raised in so much tradition and religion where we just thought God was a taskmaster, that he was whipping us every time we did something wrong. But even as we are here, I just feel the Lord just releasing a mighty wave of healing. The Lord says, I'm releasing pain. I see needle. I saw a needle in the spirit. He says, I'm removing the uh, fluid off of your lungs in the spirit. He said, and I will cause your lungs to begin to breathe again. My God, we declare over Alicia, Louisiana, Jefferson, the healing of God. I'm telling you, and I want you to stay tuned because there is something that the Lord gave me for single women. I believe that single women, uh, the enemy has perverted the waiting process of single women. The enemy has perverted you and your wait for your miracle or your blessing. But I want to prophesy to you, Patricia Knotson. I want to prophesy to you as me and my son are here, main and I want to prophesy to you, Alicia, Louisiana. I want to declare to you, women of God, Jenny Sims, Annie Burton. I want to declare to you, all of you sons and daughters of reformers. I want to prophesy to you that your story Story is changing, Terrell Zeno. I want to tell you, men of God, that men of God, your 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 malehood is being healed. Come on, the things that were that were done to you is being healed. I want to decree to you, Evangelist Tamika O'Brien, Evangelist Tamika O'Brien, what a miracle that's getting ready to happen for you. I'm telling you right now, I sense a mighty wave of healing, Prophet. I'm telling you, I feel it so strong, Father, Holy Spirit. We release your healing. Uh, we want to prophesy to, we want to prophesy to evangelist Tamika O'Brien. Evangelist Tamika O'Brien, God says, I'm reconstructing you. He said, I'm recalibrating you. He says, I'm bringing you back on the table. I'm bringing you back in the surgery room. He says, and I'm going to do a new thing. He said, and it shall spring up like never before. Come on, Matthew, prophesy the word of the Lord to her. Uh, I just hear that the Lord is uh, is strengthening you. I just hear that the Lord is is touching you, uh, even as you are, as, even as Apostle was prophesying to you. I could hear, I could hear the Lord say that uh, almost like. Um, I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to make out the word, almost like he's reinvigorating you. I don't know how to explain that, but that's why I hear in the spirit. But I just hear that he's really strengthening you, that he's pouring it out upon you, um, that you need it. It's a time of refreshing that we all need because sometimes we run for so long and we push so hard uh, that sometimes we need God to pour back into us. We need to be sat down. We need to be poured into. And I just really feel in the realms of the spirit that the Lord is really pouring into you like never before, uh, that he is coming. and there was I, I heard I just heard streams of income streams of income I don't I don't know I don't know what you need I don't know I don't know what what it is that you need but I hear that the Lord is going to provide funding for it uh, that there are streams coming to you. Uh, the Lord is touching you. The Lord is, is blessing you and the Lord is refreshing you that you may be able to run uh, your race, that you may be able to run your course and that you may be able to fulfill the ministry that he has placed in your belly that is on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world that I hear. And so as you continue to push, as you continue to, 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 to fight, as you continue to press your way towards the, high, towards the mark and the high calling of Jesus Christ, that the Lord is doing it for you. We decree and declare it that it shall be so in Jesus' precious name. And we declare that over you, Tamika. Um, even as if you, you know, she said, my God, yes, she receives it. Um, um, this is so powerful right now as the Lord is moving. The spirit of God is sweeping and hovering over the waters. The men are being set free. My daughter's father's prison is one of them. Amen. Pika, we're declaring God over the men of God. You are right that the Lord is going to begin to cause prison doors to open. That when they leave out of those prisons, that they will be reformed and never the same again 
in. Hallelujah. We're declaring over you guys. She Flossie, we don't know who you are, but we're excited about having you today. Catrice Woodland, amen. We're excited about having you today. Come on, Brita Towns Rose, amen. They're receiving the word of God. We can't get to everybody, but surely we know that the power, you need to share this and you need to tell somebody that God wants to reform their life. The woman of God got on and said, there's a duality that is happening, that we will not only reign, but we will reign. We will receive rain that's coming down, and then we will reign in the spirit realm. My God, R-E-I-G-N, hallelujah. We will, it will be a duality. Then he comes along and says that he saw a compass and that we need not to be led by our hurt. I was one of those. I remember my life story, how I was led by so many things, and some of those things I didn't know I was being led by because they were ancestral curses and demons in the bloodline. And as I begin to come more into the knowing of the Lord for myself and not what religion was. Religion is basically, it tells you clap your hands, stomp your feet, put a praise on it. I was a dancing mess. I was shouting, but being an abortionist. I was shouting, but at the abortion clinic. Come on, somebody. I was shouting, but going from bed to bed to bed to bed. Come on. I was being led by the lust of my flesh. I was being led by my desire, the things that I saw. I remember five years ago when the Lord called me back into the fold. I was I was backslidden. I was just doing whatever. I married anybody I wanted to marry. I just loved any man that I saw when I first met because there were holes in me. When there were holes on the inside of you, when there were holes on the inside of you, and those holes are not filled by the power of God, when those holes are not filled by the sanctity of the Lord. The enemy will desire to fill it. He told Jesus, he said, look, he said, I'll give you all of this if you bow before me. My God, and the enemy has things to offer to. He has things to give to. The enemy is trying to give you another way out. He's telling you, shoot that crack up your arm. He's telling you, drink that bottle of cognac. He's telling you to do something. He's telling you, go sleep around. Oh, don't worry. You won't die. You won't, nothing won't happen to you. He did the same thing from the beginning of time. He told Eve, he said, eat of this apple. He said, and surely you will not die. And he was correct. She didn't die, but she died spiritually. And not only that, but she now was covering herself where she no longer needed to cover herself. She did not even know that she was naked until she ate of the forbidden fruit. My God, what is the Lord saying? He says, I want to do a new thing in you. He says, I want to show you my way. He wants to tell you women of God, I can't wait to announce what God has given me. It's a strategic million dollar idea that is so potent for the men and women of God. I'm telling you, if you are a widow, you can be revived again. I feel the winds of the Holy Spirit. He says, write in your house. Put your hand on the screen. Write in your house. Put your hand on the screen. Believe again. Believe him to heal. Believe him to deliver you. Believe him to set you free. The power is not in us, but we are only deliverers. You know, Matthew, Son, Church, Reformers, you know what I just seen? I seen a truck. I seen a UPS truck. And when you see that UPS truck, you know that there's something inside of that truck. My God, that is for you when it pulls up to your house. And the Lord said, that's the Holy Spirit. You got to invite the Holy Spirit in. You have to let the Holy Spirit in. You have to begin to see and begin to know what God is saying and doing. I'm telling you, I'm decreeing over y'all emotional healing. I'm decreeing over you healing in your bodies. And not only that, we want to, when you're led of your flesh, watch this, what happens. Your business becomes affected. Let me tell you something, people of God. The Lord says, tell my people. He said, if you have not gone and built your business, if you have not gone and did what God asked you to do, do it. For there is multi-dimensional money out there. Uh, Pika was someone I saw in the spirit the other day. And the Lord says, millions, millions, millions. He says, I have so much in store for many of you. Do not give up. Do not throw in the tower. Do not walk away from the Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. 
Holy Spirit, we honor your presence. Holy Spirit, we bow down before you. Holy Spirit, you are Lord. Holy Spirit, you are the lifter up of our head. Holy Spirit, you are the wind beneath our wings. Holy Spirit, you are the bread over troubled waters. Holy Spirit, you are the keeper. For you shall Holy Spirit, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we adore you. Look at this painting. I want you guys to see this painting that we're about to spotlight. The woman of God is going to begin. She said when we were started, she said, nothing is coming to me. And I begin to say to her, I said, Tina, listen. I said, let me say something to you that when there is a blank canvas that is the start of something new that is a start of a new beginning it's a start of a refreshing it's a start of a revival so many of us have been through the trenches of abuse the trenches of pain the trenches of rape the trenches of molestation the trenches of being uh being let down so many things you have experienced in the realm of the spirit. But the Lord declares today, he said, I'm doing a new thing. He said, and you shall know it and it shall spring forth. Come on, Tina, decree and declare what you have there. Okay, well, like you said earlier, I had nothing. And then all of a sudden there was this story. There was a story that I remember years ago that I saw and I had this little child. He was on this, this big beach there, and there was all these starfish all scattered on this beach. And he would, like, there were thousands and thousands of them. And he ran up and this old man was walking by and he saw this little boy grabbing these starfish one by one and throwing them back into the water, throwing them back into the water. And the old man said to him, you know, there's thousands and thousands. You're never going to get to them. Doesn't make a difference. Stop. It doesn't make a difference. And the little boy ran, grabbed one little starfish, threw it in the ocean. He went back to the old man and he says it made a difference to him. You know, and that's the thing, like we have to keep pressing. We keep pressing in what we're supposed to do. No matter if it seems like there's no results or if it seems so little, because that, li that little bit that you do when you go out, it matters to somebody. But then as I was painting this, like God was very specific about the, the, uh, the starfish being on the rock. I mean, how many times for us, you know, we need to stay on the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ. That's where we need to be planted. Because you can see in the painting, the water is coming in, but the water's not there yet. The water's not there yet. The, the starfish, you know, so many times in our life, we feel stranded. We're absolutely stranded. It's like, I'm just sitting here. I feel like I'm drying up. I feel like I'm of no use. Lord, where are you? Where are you, God? Where are you in my life? And it's like you just hold on because you can see the water is rushing in. The water is rushing in to bring refreshment, to bring that starfish back out to where it belongs. And there's so many times, like when you talk about endurance, we need to wait on him. You wait on Jesus to bring that to you. And then also in the painting, I saw a bottle. So many times you always see in movies and different things like a bottle with something in it. And, and God was just telling me, you know, we've got promises. There have been promises that God's given us. There's been promises and things that we've seen. And it's been bottled up and it sat there, bottled up and off to the side. And God's like, he, as he starts to rush in, as he starts to rush in and rescue and to bring, he's going to take you and those promises with you. You need to just hold on to those promises, keep those promises safe. So when God can come in and he can pull you out, he can pull you out to where you're to be, but you need to stand on him and stay on him because you can't, you can't do it on your own. What God has promised, what God has called you to do, you cannot do it on your own. And that's why God gives you such big dreams. That's why God gives you things because you cannot do it on your own. If you could do it on your own, then it wouldn't be God. This starfish cannot get off that rock it, to get to the ocean. The ocean needs to come to it. And that's where we are as a body of Christ. We need to stop thinking that we can do it. We need to come before him and say, God, I cannot do this. I am going to sit and I'm going to wait on you, God, for you to take me to my promise, for you to camp, come in, bring refreshing, and carry me to my promise. And those promises that are bottled up, that have sat on the side, that have looked like they're done, that have looked like they're dead, you're going to bring in that rush. You're going to bring in your rushing mighty water and you're going to pull it out with me and you're going to set me in the place that I'm to be. Even if I stranded myself someplace I was never meant to be. You turn to him, 
turn to him so many times when you see on an ocean, when you see, when you walk along the ocean side, you'll see animals are stranded in little pools. You see animals are stranded, like little things are stranded all about way up on the rocks, way in different spots, but they have to wait because even though they stranded themselves, that water is coming in, that water will come in and pull them back out. And if you found yourself in a place where you stranded yourself, you threw yourself up upon a place that you should never have been, turn to the to Christ. He is the only one that will rush that in. He'll rush that water in to pull you out of that place you never should have been. And that I just decree and declare that those promises will not be bottled up forever. They will come to fruition in Jesus' mighty name. Every promise will come to fruition in Jesus' mighty name. By the blood of Jesus, amen. I just want to begin to begin to worship. I feel a worship as they keep the painting side by side. I just kept hearing the words as you begin to say what you said. I just keep hearing him saying, you can do it on your own. No. So many times we try to do it on our own. As she said, uh, we try to walk on our own. We try to talk on our own. But it was never meant for us to do it on our own on our own uh, but we lean into the lord today we lean into him we cast every care upon him we cast every worry upon him we can't do it on our own we can't do it on our own we cannot do it on our own i'm not the best singer but i know i hear what he's saying that we cannot do it on our own. We cannot lean to our own understanding. Hallelujah. And there's so many times that that refreshing doesn't touch us. Hallelujah. But God, we are so thankful unto you that you're cleansing us. You're reforming us. We can do it on our own. Come on, just take a second and worship him in your homes. Take a second. And even as she's painting, I hear the Lord saying, I'm not done writing your story. I'm not done revamping your story. Even her, even her paintbrush is prophetic. Even when she's painting and she hasn't finished painting, God says, I'm not done painting your story. I'm not done completing the puzzle. I'm not done working it out for you. He says, I will carry you where you cannot carry yourself. I will refresh you where you cannot refresh yourself. For I, the Lord, shall do a new thing. I will do a new thing. I'm reforming you. I'm refreshing you. If you need prayer, you can call the number 917-325-7555 where we will meet you at the telephone line and you can decree and declare what it is that you need you can't do it on your own no you can't do it on your own you can't do it on your own you can't do it you can't do it you can do it. You can do it on your own. No, demando bohosia. Let me help you. Let me carry you. Let me revive you. You can do it on your own. No, oramanda daraba. You can do this on your own. Eramando daraba We trust you to do what you do, Lord. Eramanda Because every time you do it, just right. Hey, Messiah, you carry me, Hedomonia. You carry me, Oramandia. He has never left you. He has never forsaken you. I got you. I got you at your word, Hedomandia. Your love will never fail us, Oramanda Baha. Your love will never fail us, Hedomandia. Your love, your love, your love will never fail us. Your love and your praises, they keep going, they keep flowing. Your love, it will never fail us. We are reminded of your word, Lord. 
we pour our heart to you. We give you everything. We give you our children, Lord. We give you our reasons. We give you our pain. Stop picking it back up again. Oh, God. Stop picking it back up again. Once you drop it, you need to let it go. Stop picking up the pain again. Leave it to me. 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 You keep picking your wounded place. You keep picking your broken place. Stop doing it. Stop doing that. Leave it to me. Leave me. I am the surgeon. I am the way maker hey he don't more set a la ma i will carry you or i'm on dear and i know i'm not see on that on the ma he i know i will carry you i will carry you i i am my soul i'm on the other about i am a money robo she tell her on my I will carry you. Oh, yeah, my dear, and I'm so yeah, Hallelujah. I give you peace. You prepare a table before me. Oh, that my dear, and I'm on sire. And the presence of my enemies. Oh, that my dear, and I'm on dear. Oh, that my dear, Bahaya. Hallelujah. I am on so yeah, the back here, and then I'm on my Come on, we declare his word. And my dear, and I'm on sire. You prepare a table you prepare a table what I'm on dear you prepare a table he's preparing your table people of God he's preparing your table people of God he's preparing your table oh shut up on dear you cannot do it on your own if you look to the left you'll see this painting you cannot do it on your own all the help that we know is in the Lord hallelujah for he has given us dominion hallelujah dominion 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 and power dominion and power belongs to him come on at this time we're going to hear from a daughter from the house who will be ministering the word of the lord not long honor to god to my spiritual mother apostle to the pastors of this house to everybody who's watching um our theme for this month is endurance and on last sunday seer melody summer says endure to the promise and then she said it was worth it and as i was listening to the service on today i kept hearing the word process process so god is saying endure the process he says, endure the process. And he told me that in Matthew 24 and 13, he says, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. He said, if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. And then he told me, he said, go to Daniel. He said, they need to see an example of how I saved. So he took me to Daniel uh, chapter three. And we all know about King Nebuchadnezzar, how he built the idol and he wanted everybody to worship the idol. When they heard the music, the heart, they supposed to stop everything they doing and bow down to this idol. But he had three Hebrew boys who didn't bow down. So we're going to go to um, Daniel chapter three, verse eight. We're going to start at eight. Um, no, uh, let's start at 12. Let's start at 12. Um, verses 1 through 11 talks about how he built this idol and how he wanted the people to bow down to this idol and not to bow down and serve God. Okay, so chapter, verse 12 says, but there are some Jews who have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty, neither serve your gods, nor worship the image of gold you have set up. 13, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? He says, now you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, 
desire, the lyre, the heart, the pipe, all this music, are you ready to fall down and worship the image I made? Very good. But if you do not worship, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we need not to defend ourselves before you in this matter. So what God is saying, when we set in our minds to praise him, to worship him, to glorify him, and when we come against the naysayers, we don't have to justify why we serve a God that we serve. We don't have to justify why we praise and worship God. We're not going to bow down to the images of things that are set before us. It can be your friends. It can be your family. It can be your job. It can be whatever idol that you put before God. He said, we're not supposed to serve those things. We need to be like the Hebrew boys. We need to stand for it. We don't have to endure the process. Regardless of what people say, they stand fast. And they say, we don't have to explain ourselves to you. We're, gonna, we're not going to bow down to that image. And then it says, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? I don't have to tell you who's going to rescue me. God's going to show you. Ooh. And that's what he said, people of God. He said, you don't have to tell them nothing. He said, I'm going to show them. Hey, you ain't got to justify. Let my work speak for itself. I don't need you to back me up. Let me back you up. That's what God is saying this season. Endure the process. Let me back you up. You ain't got to back me up. I, I have the victory. So then it says, Shadrach and Misha uh, um, replied, um, hold on. It said, we are, if we are thrown into the blaze of furnace, verse 17, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty hand. So we already know God's going to deliver us. See, they had faith. They didn't worry about how hot the furnace is. They say, we know for a fact that my God is going to deliver us. And we got to get like that this season. Regardless of what we're going through, we got to know that my God is going to deliver us. Our fire furnace can be our health. Our fire furnace can be our trials and tribulations. A fire furnace, just, it just signifies something. But God says endure. What does endure mean? Endure means to suffer something painful. Yeah, the process is going to be painful. But the end result is going to be so much worth it. Okay? It says, then verse 18, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you set up. So regardless, if he don't show up, I know he can. I'm still not going to bow down and do what you tell me to do. And that's how we got to tell the world. Regardless of what goes on in our lives, regardless of the situation, we're not going to bow down. We serve an awesome God. We didn't get this far by ourselves, but by the grace of God, he has brought us this far. With us enduring, he said, endure the process. What are you willing to endure? Are you willing to endure the process? You want to see the promise, but you don't want to go through what you got to go through to get the promise. That's a work. It go hand in hand. All right? He says that he was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie them up, tie Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up and throw them up. See, the enemy don't want you to be great. So he thinks he can stronghold you. He thinks he can bind your hands. He thinks he can bind your legs. He thinks he can close your mouth. He thinks he can come up against you this season, but that's all right. You don't have to justify it. God say he got you this season, all right, into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were thrown into the blazing furnace. The queen said, urgent, so the flame was so hot that the flames killed the soldiers. Now look at that. The furnace was so hot that it killed the soldiers, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were still alive because they refused to bow. God said, when you refuse to do the things of the world and focus on me, everything around you, I'll burn it up. Woo! And I'll let you still stand. Woo! So he's doing his season. He's coming to burn up those impurities. He's coming to burn up those things that keep you bound. It might be, he, he used the soldiers on the outside, but he's talking about that's in your heart. Those things that deep 
down root. I'm going to burn it up. I'm putting a fire and furnace on you. He said, I'm burning up everything that's not like Jesus. That so hot that everybody but Shadrach, Meshach, and was burned up and set on fire. Who, who wouldn't serve God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God like that that protects us from the fire? All right? Then it says, then the king Nebuchadnezzar linked up in amazement and asked his adversaries, wasn't there three men tied up that we threw in the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. So God said, I'll meet you there. He said, don't worry about what the enemy is going to do to you. Don't worry about where they're going to throw you. He said, I'll meet you there. And when I get there, he said, I'm going to unbound you. I'm going to untie you. In this season, God says, I'm unbinding. I'm untying you this season. He said, you will be free to worship with me. You will be free to praise me. They took prayer out of school, but guess what? Prayer is back in school. Even during this pandemic, God said, you stay worshiping me. You stay praising me. He said, in the end, I mean, just like he said in the Hebrew voice, in the fire, I'm going to say you. The Ebenezer didn't approach you. Open in the blaze of Front is shouting, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo, servants of the Most High God, come out here. So that's what they're gonna do. They gonna see the God that you serve, and those same naysayers, those same dogs gonna come and say, "Come on up out of here." They wanna know what can they do to serve the God that you serve. He say he saved them. See, he they endured the process. Never once did they mumble and complain about getting thrown in the furnace. Never once did they cry, woe is me. Never once did they look at somebody else and shift the blood to somebody else. They knew they had to go through this process to be a testimony for somebody else. God said, endure the process. He said, you got to have endurance this season. You got to go through this with patience. He said, you got to be a good soldier. He said, endure. He said, and I'll do the rest. And God is a God that he cannot lie. He shall not lie. He said, endure the process. Matthew 24 and 13 says, but he that shall endure until the end. You got to keep going to the end. Not what your end is. Not what you think your end is. But you got to go to God's end. When it gets tough. When, it get, when you get stagnated, he say, stand still and know that I am God. He say, but he that endure to the end, the same. He said the same. That means you endure. So the same, that means you shall be saved. Not your brother be saved, not your sister be saved. But guess what? They can be saved by watching you. He said, endure. So we got to endure this season. And then everybody had to serve their God. Everybody had to turn and serve your God. Why can't we serve God like that? He said, endure the process. It's a process. You got to go through the process in order to get the promise. When Jesus went to the cross, he had to go through a process. He had to be beaten. He had to be scorned. He had to go through the process in order for us to get the promise. What is that promise? The promise is eternal life. So God said, even as you go through the fiery furnace, know that I will be there with you. And when I am there, you will be free. Because it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And God said, he shall save you this season. So my people, my children, my sons, my daughters, he said, endure. He didn't say it's going to be easy. He should say endure. Endure. That's all he said is endure. Endure to the end. Endure the process. You want the rain, the R-A-I-N, the blessings to rain on you. Then you want the R-E-I-G-N to rain with him. You got to endure the process. Ooh. And then he said, Brother Matthew say, accomplish. So as you endure the process, and as you, he reigns on you, and you reign on him, guess what? The accomplice is he directing your path. 
So in the paintings that Sister Tina put, come on, endure. Endure. You see how the shellfish was stuck on the rock? The rock was Jesus. But guess what he was doing? He was sitting the hell. He was sitting the water so he can go back to the to the ocean where it belongs, so it can live. God said, that's what I need you to do. I need you to endure the process so you can live this season. To God be the glory. Pastor Ma, that's all I have that God gave me. Listen, I want to, I want to, you just going forth like a bullet out of a gun barrel in the spirit. I'm telling you, this is so powerful. You said some powerful stuff, daughter. You said, and I want you to keep your screen right there. You said on here, you said, my God, you took everything and what everybody said and tied it together. You said that God took you to Daniel. And if anybody in the word of God knew about enduring the process, it had to be Daniel. Because Daniel endured even when other people was not enduring. Many people bow, but they refused to bow. They refused to compromise. And see, there is something so intricate about what you said. My God, many people are so amazed with the word of God, but yet there's no revelation of change. Now, I don't want to take what you're saying today and leave out of here and still turn around whimpering like a baby, complaining like a baby. Daniel lived in a city where nobody really wanted to believe, where nobody really wanted to do, but he stayed in that city and he laid before God without compromise. My God, and see, we think the process is for people, but the process was really for Daniel too. God was processing him. He was a man, he became a man of excellence. He didn't need a degree, his gift made room for him. He made a believer out of those people all because he endured amen this is so powerful then you said even you said you said god said he said i'm gonna show up he showed up in the fire ain't that something that god will not leave you where you are he says as you are enduring see when daniel began to endure in the beginning there wasn't a, there wasn't nobody there oh my god but during the process the spirit of the lord showed up what is god saying that in your process he says i'm gonna be sure to show up he said but i gotta stand in the back Background, and I gotta let you feel this thing. It said that Daniel bones, he could feel the fasting in his bones. My God, now when we're not telling some of y'all to go out here and fast like Daniel and be fed, don't no no no, but I'm telling you the extremeness of what this woman of God is up here speaking, my God, about endurance. And oftentimes I found out, Shanita, when God takes us to the word the way he does, we think it's to rejoice, but it's it's really to gut us out. It's really to make us better. It's really for us to become. My God, and I want you to begin to prophesy. I want you to open your mouth because there's a strong prophetic wind in your mouth. There's a strong prophetic wind, a wind of edge, a wind of revival, a wind of movement and power. Come on, prophesy to the people of God and begin to declare the word of the Lord. Amen, amen. Hey, yellow seeker of the Osha. God, I declare and decree that this season, your people shall endure, God. They shall endure to the end, God. We will not fall this season. We will not sway this season, God. They will not crumble, God, but they shall endure. They shall stand fast. They shall stand boldly. We shall stand boldly before the throne of grace this season. We shall stand boldly before the throne of God. Every spirit of fear we bind it. We cast it out. Just like he burned up the people, the soldiers in the fire of friends. God said, I'm burning out the fear. He said, I'm burning it out. He said, I'm burning it out this season. God said, I'm burning it out. He said, I declare and decree that the fire of the living God shall burn up everything, every impurity that's not like him. And it shall be so this season. Amen. Keep going. My God. God say, I have not forgotten about you. He said, you stopped enduring. 
And you got in my way. He said, if you want to be saved, he said, enjoy and move out the way. He said, but two people can't fight. He said, I'm pulling you right and self pulling you left. He said, he said, let go and let God. God, we denounce self in this season. We let your Holy Spirit take control, God. We declare your fire, God. I declare and decree, God, your men and women of God, God, wherever you lead us to, God, we will follow this season. We shall not mumble, God. We shall not complain, God. I decree and declare that everybody on this line, on Facebook, God, that on the sound of my voice, God, they shall never be the same, God. I decree and declare, God, the deliverance shall hit the households, God. Deliverance shall hit your homes, God. Deliverance shall hit the streets, God. I declare and decree, God, healing. God say, He said, your furnace, God. It can be your healing. God say, you speak. He said, you speak illness on yourself. He he said the Bible says, speak those things not as though they were. When the enemy say, I feel bad, he plays that. See, you tell the enemy that I feel great in God. He say, I died for you. He said, by my stripes, he said, you are healed. He said, declare my word. Not your word, but his word. He came in about shots. I get a real thing. He said, He's a God that cannot lie. Yellow Bossy. He called a little boat. Shut it a little boat. He called a little boat. He got a real shake. He asked, He got a little boat. He called a little boat. He got 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 a little boat. He's doing a washing. He got a little boat. 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 He's doing a baptizing. He said, with the evidence of speaking in love. He said, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. He said, open your mouth. He said, open your mouth. He said, receive it. He said, receive Yes, 